What's the word, y'all? Welcome back. We are here to talk about the first official trade of the offseason. Hopefully, this is the first domino to fall for us to get a ridiculously crazy offseason. I am here for it. Let's talk about it. I'm just chilling here. I'm playing my first game of Pokemon Unite. I'm on Slowpoke, and I think I play well. We got the W. That's all that really matters. And I get a notification on my phone. Took me a few minutes to actually react to it because, again, I'm in this game. I don't want to let my teammates down, so I wait till the game is over, and boom, it's a trade for Mulch. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me fill you in. Um, Memphis Grizzlies are sending Jonas Valanciunas, the 17th overall pick, and the 51st overall pick to New Orleans for Steven Adams, Eric Bledsoe, the number 10 pick, the number 40 pick, and a 2022 first-round pick via the Lakers that is top 10 protected. Woo, I can already see. I know Memphis Grizzlies fans love Valanciunas, and you, you, you still have that attachment to him. But I, I'm, I'm excited to see the, the photoshops of Steven Grizzly Adams or the t-shirts. It's gonna, somebody's gonna have it. Somebody, somebody's gonna have it. This is one of the rare trades where on paper, I believe that both teams win. Now, you don't really know until you see the bouncing of the balls, but I think this is a W of a trade. Now, I said the same thing last season, and this lets you know how crazy it can be. When Josh Richardson got traded for Seth Curry, I was like, W for both teams. Obviously, that didn't really turn out to be a W for both teams. But until we see the actual teams or uh, how, how the rest of the offseason goes, we can't really grade this trade right now, but we can talk about it. But on paper, I do enjoy this. Let's talk about this from the Pelican side of things um, because I, I'm on record of saying this is one of the most important offseasons um, in Pelicans history for a few reasons. The first one being Zion Williamson, your emerging star who was already an all-star in just his second season. He probably would have been an all-star in his first season if we're being honest with each other. Um, is going into his third head coach. His third head coach already in three seasons. That's not good to have a young player with real no real consistency in his locker room. And yeah, listen, I think they hired the right guy. I'm super excited to see, see what Willie Green does for this team. I do believe he can be the player coach that can relate to these younger players because he is also a younger guy in himself. That's the first reason why this is a super, super important offseason. The second is they just had a, a, a superstar player in Anthony Davis who gave them eight, nine, I don't remember how many years of his career, and it just didn't end on good terms. And I know that could leave a bad taste in the mouths of the future stars that are coming into the organization. And the last one, J.J. Reddick got traded at the trade that line and he was not happy he went on to his podcast and he talked about all the ins and outs the bads and the goods of the front office and the lack of trust between the front office and the players so you need this offseason for the pelicans to be a very very good one right and this first trade this first trade i can look at and understand the direction of what they're doing because last offseason they did some things where i couldn't see the direction of it right they trade Drew Holiday, and yes, you get back picks, and we're going to talk about those picks. And you get in Eric Bledsoe, right? Okay, no big deal. Drew Holiday is really good. He got a lot of picks, and Drew Holiday turned into me an NBA champion. Good for them. The other thing they did last offseason that made zero sense to me, and I'm on record of saying this too. You can go back in the videos. I don't know how you can extend Steven Adams without seeing how he plays with your star players, especially when your star player is a 6'6 power forward that doesn't shoot the ball. We gonna pair him with a seven footer that sits in the paint all day, and we're gonna extend him twenty plus million a year. It made little to no sense to me. Now starting off this off season, they made a move that makes sense, and yes, it did cost them, but it makes sense because Jonas Valanciunas um, is a big body screen setter. He is a positive defender, but the thing that's gonna matter the most with this Pelicans team is the fact that he has the ability to shoot threes. Now I know Steven Adams said he was working on it. He legitimately wants to be a stretch four or stretch five and maybe he will be that. But Jonas Valanciunas is backed up with a couple years of him being a good three point shooter. I understand he only attempted one a game, but he shot like almost 40% on that one a game, which is really good. I would expect when he comes to the Pelicans, they're going to have him. They're going to allow him to shoot the ball way more than what he was doing in Memphis because Zion Williamson needs that type of stretch ability on his team. I want to type in, I don't know much about, um, about, about Willie Green when it comes to coaching, but I'm excited to see what type of systems he, he actually runs with this team. Um, so Jonas Valanciunas comes in immediately as a positive, but deeper than on court things right now, this sets them up for a successful offseason deeper than that. Because you got off the terrible contract, Stephen Adams, we already talked about that extension being stupid. You got off the bad contract of Eric Bledsoe. And now that allows them to talk to point guards. And I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. You know why? Um, because now they have the money to potentially match whatever Lonzo gets offered. And as a person, 
that would love to see Lonzo in that, that black and red? I don't like the, the idea of them having the money to match Lonzo Ball. But hopefully, <laughs> from a Bulls fan's perspective, I hope that they go after another guy who they've been wanting to talk to, it seems like, and that is Kyle Lowry. So this trade, yes, it cost them seven draft spots and then a future pick from the Lakers. Um, this allows them to go into free agency and potentially buy and put together a team that they believe can work around Zion and Brandon Ingram maybe because there were some more reports today about Brandon Ingram in Miami. I don't know how legitimate those reports were, um, but it's a possibility. So that right there, you, st you drop down seven spots. That's fine when you have the type of flexibility because this is a team, remember, this is a team that is trying to compete for a playoff spot. I understand that they just got Zion three years ago, but what you see with Trey Young, what you see with Luka Doncic, what you see with Ja Morant is players on their rookie deal competing for playoff spots, and it's good for the, the front office to be able to be buyers while Zion is still only making first overall pick money instead of super max money where he's going to get when he's eligible for it. You know what I'm saying? So this allows them to go into free agency, get their point guard. Hopefully it's not Zion, or hopefully it's not Lonzo, and they can continue to roll like that. Now from Memphis' part of view, yeah, Yes, Jonas Valanciunas was one of the most impactful players on your team. Probably the second most impactful other than Zah Morant, obviously. Um, because defensively, like I said, a positive. He, he seems like a great team player. Killing the glass. Can stretch the floor a little bit. Hard body screens. He was just an all-around great, great pro. But what I really th say about the Memphis Grizzlies is from the past couple years, they have been amazing. And I mean absolutely amazing when it comes to finding talent in the draft absolutely amazing and this trade tells me that they have someone on their radar and i'm seeing a tweet right here right in front of me that josh giddy is a guy that they're targeting at number 10 if he's still available and if they believe that josh giddy is their guy i trust their front office bro because they have done a tremendous job with drafting over the last couple of years i'm trying to quickly go through all of this okay so desmond bang Desmond Bain was an amazing pickup. I don't think technically they drafted Desmond Bain, but they got him as a rookie. Great talent um, talent there. John Moran, obviously, at the second overall pick. Brandon Clark is really good. Xavier Tillman. Um, I have to do this because my pinky doesn't work the way most people, people's pinkies work. Um, um, Jaron Jackson Jr. These are all picks that they got within the draft successfully. So if they believe at number 10 that they have a guy that they like, I trust that front office to do that. And Memphis is never a place that is going to sign big name free agents. It just won't be. So the way they're going to potentially build a championship team, because that's what everybody wants to do. Everybody wants to win a championship. The way they build a championship team is hitting on their draft picks and winning their trades. So they're moving up seven spots to take on two relatively bad contracts and you get another first round pick in the future. Sounds like a W to me. And Steven Adams is much of a, or the lack of a fit. He wasn't a fit for the Pelicans, he can still be pretty solid. He's not a bad NBA player. Eric Bledsoe was not a bad NBA player. He's just not. Um, he didn't fit what the Pelicans wanted to do. But Eric Bledsoe, me and, me and the guys literally talked about this yesterday, before or two days ago, before this trade even happened. If Eric Bledsoe is your backup point guard, then you probably have a pretty solid team. Because Eric Bledsoe is a great defender. Downhill, there's not many people stopping him. And he, he does those type of things. I don't, I, I love this trade. I really do love this trade for the Memphis Grizzlies side of the ball, uh, side of the things. I just want to see what they do with this number 10 pick. See what they could get at 40 because I, I mentioned they're pretty good at the back of the draft too. And then they also get a pick in from the Anthony Davis trade. Now, I'm going to go back to the Pelicans because y'all know we be rambling and rambling. I ain't got no script or nothing. I do like what the Pelicans is doing here as well. When you trade Anthony Davis, when you trade Drew Holiday, when you trade um uh paul george where you trade james harden you get a ton of picks right you get a ton of picks and yes it does help or uh, it is a good idea to maybe draft some of those picks but i am a full-on believer that you should be using some of those picks that you get in these these blockbuster trades to move up in the draft or to get current day players that you think can help you right now you see that with OKC. It seems like OKC is trying to call up to get the first overall pick because they have 20 something first rounders in the next seven years it's hard for the Detroit Pistons to not at least pick up the phone if Sam Press is, is like, hey, we really love Cade. We're willing to throw you six first-round picks. So I like that the, that the Pelicans are willing to sell some of those picks they got back in the Anthony Davis trade if they truly, truly believe that this is the right move for them to get better in the near future. I wonder if more teams are going to do that, right? 
Um, the Houston Rockets have a ton of picks for because of the James Harden trade. OKC has a ton of picks because of Paul George, because of Russell Westbrook, because of everybody. <laughs> because Al Horford, like it's a lot of picks. A lot of picks in their repertoire. Um and it's just it's just safer that way. Not many teams have the NBA draft down to a science, other than the Memphis Grizzlies, I guess. So it's probably safer to trade for a player that you know, you absolutely know can help you instead of taking a shot on a guy in the 20s four years from now. Let's trade that pick now before we know that that pick is 27th. Anyway, let me know what you think in the, in the comment section about this trade. Um, really solid way to start off this Monday. NBA draft is on Thursday. Frazier start August 6th. I'm excited, y'all.